What's up? It's Kristen. Welcome back to another video. Today I am just doing a quick and simple little recipe video for you showing you how to make super easy and delicious mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot. I love my Instant Pot. I have several Instant Pot recipes on my channel already, so go check those out if you haven't yet. I'll link those up at the top and in the description. But this recipe is super simple. It's really healthy, no oil. Of course, you can jazz it up if you want to, but we're just doing simple here so you guys can kind of get the like basic recipe down and you can add in whatever you like. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is take about two pounds of potatoes. This is pretty much exactly two pounds of potatoes. You can also double this recipe if you want, and the cooking time stays the same and every, everything stays the same, but you just need to add a little bit more liquid. So you can totally double it if you want, but I'm just gonna make this, which serves about six servings, six people, four to six, depending on how much you eat. But the first thing you're gonna do is wash two pounds of russet potatoes. I use russet potatoes because those turn out the fluffiest, otherwise you'll get kind of waxy, pasty mashed potatoes, which nobody wants. So I use russet. You can also use Yukon Gold if you'd like, but I like russet. So I scrubbed these, washed these, and then I poked a bunch of holes in them, probably literally like 10 holes in each of them. You can cube them, quarter them if you want, but I'm just keeping this easy. So I just poked a bunch of holes with a fork, just kind of stabbed it in there, and I'm just gonna add these into my Instant Pot, and then we'll add in a cup of vegetable broth. Another really awesome thing about this recipe is that you don't have to drain the potatoes after you cook them. So that's why the actual amount of vegetable broth matters. So I have a cup of vegetable broth here and I'm just gonna pour that right on into these taters. And then you're just gonna pop your lid on top. Makes a cute little sound as always. And then you just wanna make sure that this little valve on top is not on venting, but it's on sealing. It says sealing back here. So you wanna make sure that it is sealed. So you just turn that little nozzle to there, nice and tight. And then this is so easy, like the Instant Pot usually always is. It's just gonna be manual and make sure it's on high pressure, which automatically should do that when you hit manual. And we're just gonna do 10 minutes. So just adjust your time, either up or down to 10 minutes and that's it. It takes a hot minute to come up to temperature, usually about 10 minutes. It depends on how much you have in here. And then it'll uh, cook for 10 minutes. And then it beeps a couple times. And then um, I'll show you what I do as soon as the 10 minutes is up. All right, as soon as it's done, it'll beep 10 times. In case five wasn't enough, it beeps 10 times. And then if you'd like to, you can wait about five minutes, it'll count up and release the steam. But just to make sure the potatoes aren't overcooked, I just like to release the steam right away. Apparently either way works. I've seen kind of both ways be done, but I'm just gonna release the steam now. So that's just gonna get switched to venting. Something that I wanted to show you guys, this cute little thing by this company called Steammates. They sent this to me in the mail. I have a feeling it doesn't fit my Instant Pot because I've used it twice and I feel like the food didn't get up to pressure. I don't know if it fits my Instant Pot or maybe I'm not using it right or I don't know, but I will leave a link for one of these down below because it makes it so that the steam shoots out of the sides instead of straight up into your cabinets, which is always really annoying. So if you want to get one of these, they're pretty cheap. They're on Amazon. I will leave a link below in case you're ruining your counters and you don't want to anymore. So essentially I usually take a towel and turn it with the towel so that my hand doesn't get burned. I also like to make sure that it's turned away from being underneath my cabinets because it will shoot steam straight up into your cabinets. So you just want to be careful during this part because it's really hot and you don't want to burn yourself. So I'm going to turn this to venting and let it completely vent. Okay, so once all of the steam is done releasing, that little silver thing will go back down and you'll hear it stop making noise. So that's when you know it's ready. So now you can just open up your lid. And then as soon as you pop the lid off, you just wanna test with a little knife to make sure they're finished. If they're not, no worries. It doesn't take that long to bring them back up to pressure and cook them for a little bit longer. And it kinda depends on the Instant Pot you might have and how much potatoes you're using and stuff like that. But these actually need a couple more minutes, which is rare. Usually 10 is good for me. So something I realized later after editing this video is that the reason that my potatoes, I think, took a little bit longer to cook than normal is because they were bigger than the normal, like smaller russet potatoes I normally use. That's why the cooking times might vary. Another reason they might vary is the size of your russet potatoes. So if you want to guarantee a set cook time, then all you need to do is just quarter your potatoes. So cut them in half cut those in half and that way they'll cook in 10 minutes. The 10 minutes should be perfect if you quarter them up. 
So I just wanted to mention that because I realized that the potatoes were a little bit bigger than I normally use and that's why the cooking time was a little bit off. So I was just being lazy and I don't like chopping the potatoes beforehand so I don't mind set running it for another two minutes but if you just want to make sure you know how long you're going to cook them for just quarter them up pop them in there same way for 10 minutes and they should be perfectly cooked so just wanted to mention that so put the lid back on turn that back to sealing and then i'm just going to hit manual oop hit off first and then i'm going to hit manual and probably do two more minutes and that should be about good so it should come up to pressure pretty quickly cook the two minutes and then you'll just release the pressure again this kind of works out that i could show you how to do that in case you need to do that. So as soon as those are done, we'll come back and I'll show you how to finish these up. Alrighty, so that actually didn't take very long at all. So I already released the pressure. It took like a couple minutes to come up to pressure if that cooked the two minutes and then it took about a minute to release the pressure. And now I'm gonna open it and test them out again. Let's see how they look. Oh yeah, those are done. So you'll know as soon as the knife goes in and it's nice and soft and they're not like hard in the middle, then you know you're done. So those are all good to go. Like I said, these are no drain. So the next thing that you're gonna do is you're just gonna mash these. So I have a potato masher. I'm essentially just gonna mash these up with this potato masher and get that veggie broth incorporated and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so I got these nice and mashed up. I like mine a little bit chunky, so you can kind of mash yours up. If you want them super, super fluffy, then you can mash them up for a while. I like mine a little rustic. That's why I also leave the skin on. You can totally take the skin off if you want. So the next thing I'm gonna add is a half a cup of some homemade cashew milk. So I already have a recipe for cashew milk. This is essentially that exact same thing, except I just made it a little bit thicker, so I reduced the amount of water, and I didn't add any dates or cinnamon. I added some sea salt instead. So I'm gonna add a half a cup of this. If we need more, we can add more. And I just warmed this up a little bit. I found that adding warm milk makes everything a little bit smoother and a little bit yummier. So I'm gonna add this in. If we need more, we can totally add more. We just don't want it to be too liquidy. And if you don't wanna use homemade cashew milk, you can totally use whatever non-dairy milk you'd like. But I really like the creaminess of the homemade cashew milk made a little bit thicker, but just make sure you get an unsweetened non-dairy milk, whatever you get, because you don't want these to be sweet. I've done that before and it's not the best. So I'm also gonna add in about a teaspoon of salt and this is gonna be to taste So I like my stuff pretty salty if you don't don't add too much in I'm also gonna add in some white pepper and if you have black pepper you don't have white pepper That's totally fine. This just helps the potatoes look a little nicer a little fancier when you use white pepper So you don't have chunks of black in there, but it doesn't really matter too much So I'm gonna add in some of this white pepper as well and again, this is just kind of to taste. So I'm just gonna add some of this in and we'll go from there. So then I'm just gonna take a little spatula and stir this up. All right, so I actually like mine kind of drier like this, but just for the sake of everybody else, I'm gonna add in a little bit more non-dairy milk. So again, just make them however you want them. So maybe like a quarter cup more of some warm cashew milk. And let's stir these on up and see how that looks. All right, so this is pretty much exactly how Casey and I like them at least. So because we normally put gravy on top or some sort of other yummy deliciousness, I this is about the texture that I like them. So they're nice and fluffy, they're nice and creamy, and they're super flavorful with just a little bit of salt and pepper, but feel free to add whatever else you want in. This is just like a super basic recipe. Add in roasted garlic, add nutritional yeast, add fresh herbs or dried herbs, add literally whatever the shit you want in because mashed potatoes are good any way you want them. So I just wanted to show you a super simple version. I'm probably gonna pop these into a bowl and sprinkle them with some green onions to make a little, make them look a little yummy and they'll be all ready to serve at my next little Thanksgiving or whatever the shit I need mashed potatoes for get together. All right, so I'm not, I'm clearly not like the best food stylist ever, nor do I really enjoy doing it very much. So, so that's my finished little plate of mashed potatoes for you. So I made a pretty big bowl. Like I said, about six servings. You can double it, you can reduce it in half, but make sure you use at least a cup of water in your Instant Pot to bring it up to pressure. So those are all finished. That's the finished product. You can serve them with whatever you'd like. I'm gonna eat these for Thanksgiving this year. I'm gonna bring them to a little Friendsgiving. And yeah, that's it. The full recipe will be in the description for you guys. I hope you guys liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure to subscribe if you are not subscribed yet, and I'll just see you guys in my next video. Peace out!